that they're possessed. There's a demon. You know, psychological disorders today were called demon possession back in the day, right? So they're psychologically disturbed. They've got a disorder. They're schizophrenic, something, right? This, I mean, an angel came to you, so you try to make sense with the guy. You say, maybe I can talk some sense to him. So can you show me this angel? Mm. Did people say that too? Can you show us the angel? Can you show us that book coming from the sky? I mean, you know? And so people said these things. We look as Muslims, we look at the Quran, we look at these statements of the disbelievers, and how dare they say it, talk like this to the messengers. Put yourself in that position. How easy is it? It's so much easier for you and me today. So much easier. If you were the only person in all of L.A. that believed in the messenger, and there was nobody else, thousands of years ago, L.A. didn't exist, but okay. <laughs> a messenger came, and you were the only one who believed in him. You know what everybody else would think? That guy is crazy, and you're crazy too. And when people call you crazy every single day, and mock you, and ridicule you every single day, day in and day out, Eventually, what do you start thinking? Maybe I am crazy. Maybe all of this is insane. You question yourself. You question yourself. So now, you know I said in the beginning we have to place our trust in Allah? You know how hard that can be sometimes? To place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But I want to come back to this issue of ego and tie that up, inshaAllah ta'ala. One of the hardest things to accept for human beings, naturally, is authority of other human beings. It's natural for me not to like my boss. It's natural. It's natural for a student to get a little uh, agitating with their teacher. Whenever somebody's in a position of authority over you, of power over you, there's naturally some kind of agitation. It's natural for people to despise government, to have criticisms for them. It's natural for you to look at a police car and go, huh? Authority. Human beings don't like authority. We don't like it. We like to be independent. We like being free. But here Allah is saying, willingly enslave yourself to Allah, and willingly accept the authority of this man I have appointed. I've appointed him. You're enslaved to me, and the first condition of slavery to me, La ilaha illallah, now you've acknowledged the slavery, what's the next statement? Muhammad Rasulullah. He's the messenger of Allah. He may have been your neighbor, he may have been your best friend, he may have been your cousin, he may have been your nephew, he may be your husband, he may be your father, but that was yesterday. From today on, he is what? The Messenger of Allah. That's who he is. So you know Aisha radiallahu anha? She does not say, my husband said. When she quotes a hadith, you know what she says? The Messenger of Allah said. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq when he tells us what the messenger said, he doesn't say Sadiqi, Qala Sadiqi, my friend said, my old friend, my buddy said. What does he say? Hamza, his uncle, he doesn't say my nephew said. What does he say? Qala Rasulullah sallallahu Ya Rasulullah. Not even Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah. Why? Because they are slaves and they understand this is the title Allah has given this man. Allah has given this man that title. So all those titles that he holds have now gone in the background and what's in the foreground? That he is the messenger of Allah. It's this coming back to the subject of ego in a minute. That hidden obstacle. We have conferences nowadays. The Muhammad, the great leader. Muhammad, mercy. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a great neighbor. He was kind to children. He was a great negotiator. He was a great community organizer. He was a great politician. He was a great everything. We have conferences where we invite non-Muslims and we share with them the greatness of the Messenger of Allah and this is great. It's awesome. But you know, he's not asking us to consider him a great leader. He never made a request to people to say, look, understand that I'm a wonderful father. That I'm the best husband. That's not his claim day in and day out. What's his contention with people? What's he, what does he want people to accept? One thing, of all those titles we give him, what's the one title he, he, de he demands? I am the Messenger of Allah. And that's the one thing missing from our discourse. What's really interesting is, we'll speak about the Messenger of Allah and all of his various great aspects of his personality, 
Well, what's the central mission of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What is his mission? To give people, to make people realize that among all, because of all of his great attributes, what is the reason for all of them? Or what, why did Allah Azza wa Jalla pick him with these great attributes? Because in the end, his title, his role, his identity is not Muhammad the father, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or Muhammad the friend, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or Muhammad the leader. So, or Muhammad the trustworthy, or Muhammad the truthful, وسلم, but Muhammad what? The messenger of Allah. The messenger of Allah. But you know, accepting that means that you've accepted the absolute authority of another human being. And a lot of times in Muslim discourse, when we study something from the seerah, when we study an authentic hadith, when we study an ayah that speaks about the behavior of the Prophet وسلم, you know what we say? Oh, that's just a hadith. Or oh, that was just for him. And we say that if the facade is that it's an intellectual criticism. But it's actually not an intellectual criticism. It is rooted deeply in a psychological problem of what? Ego. That's what it really is. You're not willing to accept the, the, the authority that Allah has granted this man. Why should he decide what's right and wrong? Why cannot? I had a discussion a couple of days ago with a Muslim uh, husband, I won't tell you who. And he's of the belief that, you know, the, that he has a right to take his wife's money. <laughs> he has a right to just take her money. It's his right. So we were just having a conversation. I shared with him some ayat, some hadith. And you all know that your husbands don't have that kind of right at all. She has the right to do what? Take his money. Take his money. <laughs> and he's got no right. He can't even look at her money. Right? <laughs> So I'm explaining this to him. He says, no, 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 what are you talking about? So I said, okay, here are the ayat. Yes, but. But that's just a hadith. Or no, but that doesn't make any sense. Go back to the original question. Am I talking to a Muslim? Yes. Does he know that Allah is the Lord of the world? Yes. Does he know that the Lord sent these instructions? Yes. Does he know that the Lord is just, fair, absolute? Are these instructions binding on all of his slaves? Yes. And even then when he hears the ayah or the hadith, what does he say? But I need the money. But she owes me. But I'm good to her. I deserve it. But we have a lot of expenses. That but, you know where that comes from? Ego. I haven't accepted the, the, the leadership of someone else. And you know, our deen teaches us. It teaches us unison. One of the biggest problems in our communities, the conflicts in our communities, they don't come from ideological problems. You know where they come from, right? Personality problems, clashes of ego. And look at the imagery of our deen. If somebody looks at our religion from the outside, just goes take pictures at the masajid to post them at like, you know, a discovery channel or something, right? <laughs> what would they see? They'll see a man, a leader, leading the prayer. When he makes a mistake, what do the followers do? Do they say, hey, this guy, he's making four rakahs for Maghrib. That's against the sunnah. I'm going to pray three and I'm out of here. Or do you follow him even if he makes a mistake after making him realize he's made a mistake? You make him realize he's made a mistake, but then you still follow. Discipline only happens when you crush your ego. You could argue with him. Hey, brother, is three, he prayed four. But no, no, no. The spirit of our deen, the, the unison of our deen, if we didn't have that, there would be chaos, and that's what we see today. Everybody's in position of leadership. Yes. I just want to contribute that in the days of Prophet Muhammad so in the very beginning, yes. when they had to escape to Medina and everybody's coming after them to uh, an army to, to crush them, there was a, a Persian guy, his name is Salman Farsi. Yes. He's around the Prophet so his uh, Prophet is being asked, what do we do? What do we do? He said, oh, we need to go over there. Salman Farsi asks him, uh, O Messenger of Allah, are you, did God tell you to do this, or are you doing this of your own ideology? Of your life? And, your own and that wasn't like questioning what his decision yes. was, because as a manifest, he's a man of war, he knows what the yes. decision was. He knew this was definitely wrong. Mm -hmm. and But it was in a humble way. Exactly. It when it wasn't like in front of everybody, to, you know, it was an aside. Is this, you know, and he says, no, I'm doing this out of my own. He says, in that case, let me do it for you. A suggestion. Let me take care of it okay. for you. So in essence, in essence, there was a discussion or a dialogue throughout Actually, the whole Actually, that's a whole topic in and of itself.